As soon as we leave our compound, it's clear who is now in charge. Taliban fighters have flooded the capital. Smiling and victorious, they took this city of six million people in a matter of hours, barely firing a shot. This is a site I honestly thought I would never see. Scores of Taliban fighters and just behind us, the U.S. Embassy compound. Some carry American weapons. They tell us they're here to maintain law and order. Everything is under control. Everything will be fine, the commander says. Nobody should worry. What's your message to America right now? America already spent enough time in Afghanistan. They need to leave, he tells us. They already lost lots of lives and lots of money. People come up to them to pose for photographs. They're just chanting death to America, but they seem friendly at the same time. It's utterly bizarre. Almost everywhere we go, it seems the Taliban want to talk. A lot of people are very frightened that you might engage in revenge attacks against security forces. Alhamdulillah. Since yesterday, we've proved that nothing will happen, and we give assurance to everyone that they will be safe, Mauli Murtaza tells us, and we follow our leaders. Once we make a promise, we stick to it. Maintaining law and order is top of that list of promises. At the presidential palace, the Taliban are now guarding the gate. They say they're here to fill the vacuum left when the government fled. But the welcoming spirit only extends so far, and my presence soon creates tension. It's because of you. They've just told me to stand to the side because I'm a woman. The Taliban have yet to implement their draconian version of Islamic law, but many are already preparing for it. You can see this beauty salon and many others have actually painted over images on their storefronts of uncovered women. Taliban commander Assad Masood Khistani says Islamic rule will be implemented gradually. How will you protect women? Because many women are afraid they will not be allowed to go to school, they will not be allowed to work. Uh, the, the female, the woman, uh, can uh, continue their life uh, and we will not say anything for them. They can go to the school, they can continue their education uh, but with, with Islamic hijab. So like I'm wearing? Uh, not like you, but uh, covering their faces as well. Cover the face? Job. Yeah. So you mean niqab? Yeah. Niqab. Why do they have to cover their face? Because it is in our Islam. Is it in Islam, though, that you of have to course, wear a niqab? Of course. of course, it is in Islam. Most ordinary Afghans we meet are in a state of shock, struggling to process the last 24 hours. Faisullah tells us his father was in the Afghan army and was killed this summer. Now he doesn't know what to do. Yesterday I have lost everything. Like I, I, I don't feel secure in here. You're afraid? Huh? You're afraid? Yeah, I'm afraid. Because I lost my dad. I lost my mom in a Logar province like two months ago. I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, just I'm with my later sister. We are living at home. That's why. I'm afraid from everything. It's the big, big problem. This is the big, big problem for us. It's a feeling shared by so many. Walking along, one has a sense that the real story may be the people who are not on the streets, those too afraid to leave their homes, waiting to see what tomorrow will bring.